Okay, here we go. Recording. All right. Hi, how's everyone doing? Hi, Wilson. If uh, if I talk too fast or if my accent is hard to understand, then just uh, stop me and ask me to repeat it. I'm keeping an eye on the on the chat room, so. And if anybody wants to make fun of my accent again, dragon, <laughs> that's fine too. <laughs> okay, so what I was going to talk about tonight is <laughs> yes, it is dragon. Very nice necklace. I love it. Um, I was going to talk about cleansing and charging and consecrating ritual items. Now, um, to me, there, those three things are three different things. Okay? I don't know why that would be buzzing. There's nothing else on in the house except you know, the music that's playing on the... Huh. I wonder if my mic is messing up. I don't even know how to check that. Was it... You know, I'm not even sure where the mic is on this thing. <laughs> um, what is it? Maybe it's on the bottom. Let me see what I can do. Okay, let's turn the music off. Did that help? Is it still sounding weird? Okay, did that help the sound when I turned the music off? Come on. I turned the music off. Um, hmm. okay, I've got it set to where it's noise suppressed. Oh, the random crashing in the background is my cat going nuts up and down the hall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, yeah, he does that. Okay, so, let's get back to what I was saying. So, cleansing, charging, and consecrating ritual items, to me, are three different things. Cleansing is where you clear out everything from an item. Um, you don't 
put anything into it. You just push everything, every energy, every emotion, and all that kind of stuff that's been built up in it out. Charging is where you fill it back up with just energy, whether that's your own energy or deity energy or elemental en energy. You just flood the item with energy. And consecrating an item is to charge it to a specific purpose. There are some items um, that need to be just generally charged, like your acame. This is my acame, and I just used an energy wash to charge it with my own energy. I didn't consecrate it to a specific purpose. When I was charging it, I just flooded it with my energy. I didn't, um, I didn't think about a specific aspect or ritual or anything like that. Um, other things that we need just cleansing without charging, in my opinion. All the stuff I says is just the way I do it. It's, it's my opinion, the way I think. That um, it's the way I do it for myself. Scrying items, I don't think should be charged or consecrated unless you have different scrying items for different purposes. Um, you do need to cleanse them, but they need the scrying items need to pick up the energy that you're trying to contact or use. If you flood it with your own energy as in charging, then what you think, what you are feeling at the moment you're using it could possibly interfere with with the readings and the answers. Um, like pendulums. Of course this one I haven't used. I don't use a pen pendulum much. This was a gift from Wittersons. I want it on a trivia. And I didn't even cleanse this because I like the energy and I like Wittersons. And I know that the last thought she had when she touched it was of me and I hope she likes me and was thinking happy thoughts about me. So since I haven't needed to use it, um, I didn't even cleanse it or charge it or anything. I'm just letting, letting it make me happy. Um, this is a scrying mirror that I bought. It's in the original packaging again from where I moved. It's just a black mirror. Um, but I thoroughly cleansed this uh, when I got it because when I'm scrying, I don't want my own energy or anybody, any other energy interfering. And even when you buy something brand new from a store um, that nobody else has ever used for any ritual purpose, it's still picked up things along the way. Now it's glass. It's not obsidian. It's glass. Um, I just pick up things from the people who touch them. You've got the people in the factories who make them. The people who package them up for shipping. You've got the um, people in the store who's, who's stocking them on the shelves and stuff. You never know which one of those people has, you know, had a bad day, been going through a rough patch when they touch these things. Um, so, even if it's a brand new item that's never been used before, you really, really need to clean, cleanse it. Okay? Um, and then we go on to charging. Um, after you cleanse it, well, the way I cleanse things usually is either with water or with energy. Um, for energy, when I want to cleanse something without charging any energy into it, I use visualization. Vi Sorry. I hate the ads. I love my ad blocker. The ad blocker 
I never get get ads ever. So anyway, okay. Um, when I cleanse with energy, I visualize a void in my head. Um, nothing in it, no sound, um, no, no pictures, no nothing, just a black void in my head. I hold the item in my hand and um, then I visualize that void moving from, from my head, down my arms, into my hands and into the items. I just flush that item completely with that void that I visualized, pushing everything out of it. Um, what link? Dragon, the link for ad blocker or the link for the broadcast? Um, for the ad blocker, you can just Google ad blocker plus or ad block plus, and it'll you can download it from there. Yeah, anyway, okay. Um, to clean to clean something with water, I use running water. Um, back home in Louisiana, we were lucky enough to have a small creek running through the back of of the house. So when I was living there, I would put, um, I would just take the, the item and hold it in the running water for a few minutes. Um, since I'm not near a natural water source here, I use water from my bathtub or my kitchen sink, um, which isn't as good, so I usually do the energy cleansing instead of the water cleansing. Um, does anybody else have a way that they do cleansing for items? Incense smoke is good for cleansing. Um, no, I don't boil the water. Um, and I don't usually... It depends on the item. Um, let's see, now I've done that for charging. Really, since I haven't buried an item to cleanse it, I've done that for charging. Um... Back to APEP, you asked if, uh, if you have to boil the water. Um, I don't usually boil the water, no. That's a good one, Jack. Uh, that's a good way. So, okay, um, using a, a container and you know, filling it with water and washing the item and then emptying the water and refilling it, that's a good way. Okay, so... Um, everybody has their own way of doing it, um, and really it all comes down to energy. It all comes down to the feel of everything. Um, if you can 
if you when you feel it, then that's what works. Um, okay, for charging. Um, Rainwater's good, gathering rainwater for that. I used to do that back home um, for the blessed water that I, I used. Um, I would gather rainwater and then uh, put it in my, my little bottle I made and then, or that I etched on, and then put it out under the moon to charge the water. Okay. Um, yeah, it doesn't rain enough here to, for that to be feasible. Unfortunately, yeah. If, if if it feels right to you, if it's what if it's what you feel makes the item clean of any residual energies, then um, then that's the way you need to do it. Okay, charging. Let's get back to charging. Um, some items need to be charged for uh, ritual use. Um, like I said, my athame, after I cleansed it with the, um, after I bought it, or after I cleansed it with the void, then I charged it. Now for my athame, I charged it with, an ener with my energy so that it would respond to me and be, you know, and focus my energy the way I wanted it. And I did basically the same visualization thing that I did with the with the cleansing, except instead of visualizing a void, I put myself in my head. And I visualized everything that I am, that I feel, that I think, and uh, saw it as a black energy ball, a glowing black energy ball. Black because I'm a dark witch. My energy flows better through darkness and shadow than through light. So I made myself into this dark ball and I basically visualized that dark ball of my energy flooding into my athame. Um, like I said, I didn't, I didn't think about any specific ritual or spell. I didn't think about any specific, you know, I didn't think about healing. I didn't think about happiness or prosperity or anything. I just thought about me, who I am, what I am, and sent all of that into my athame. So for general working tools, that's a good way um, to charge them to yourself. Um, there's other ways of charging if you want to charge it with specific energies. If you want to charge it with deity energy, you channel that um, that deity energy through you and visualize it charging through the object. Uh, for elemental ener energies, it's a little bit different. For earth, you can use salt or dirt. Um, you can bury the item completely in the, in the earth. If you can't do it outside, you can you know dig up a little dirt, put it in a, a container, and bury the item inside. Uh, for salt, you can either use enough salt to cover the item completely, or you can just use a sprinkling of salt. For the salt, you can use any kind of salt you want, regular you know, salt you get off the store shelf. Um, what I usually use is sea salt. I get these, this rock sea salt, um, and I put it in a, a mortar and use the pestle to crush it up really fine. And while I'm doing that, I think about what I'm going to use this item for, what its purpose is, while I'm crushing up the salt. And then I use that salt to put over the item to charge it with earth energy or whatever I'm, I'm making. Um, 
For air, you can use the wind outside or, you know, open a window when it, on a windy day when the wind is blowing through. Use the wind to charge your item. Um, yeah, I usually use the sea salt. This is, um, this is sea salt that's in, you know, block form. See? I don't know if you can see with the little chunks. And I just crush it up. I don't usually use pink salt. This is a personal thing with me, but I hate the color pink. <laughs> I really hate the color pink. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it just, it throws me off. <laughs> it puts me in a, you know, irritated state of mind. So I don't use anything pink. <laughs> you should see me when I have to crochet with pink. I'm all like, man, I wish I'd get this finished. <laughs> But <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but like I said, you can use just regular salt to buy off the salt, the shelf. Salt is an earth element. It's very, very close to the earth. Um, and it really doesn't matter how much pro processing that the manufacturers or whatever put the salt through, it's still always going to retain that earth energy. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, okay, air cleansing, you can use the wind outside, I have um, tied items to uh, tree limbs with, with ribbon and left it out in, in a really strong wind, um, smoke, incense is usually um, connected to the air elements, so you can, um, Hold it in incense smoke. Um, really, any scent can be an air element thing. So, um, if you have an oil warmer, you can use a scented oil and warm it up. And when the scent comes out, you can um, you can hold it in the, in the air over the the warmer. Um, for water, you can use charged water that you blessed under the moon or however you do it. You can use, I really prefer using a natural water source, so I don't do a lot of water charging or water cleansing here, but um, you can get a small fountain, like one of those little tabletop fountains that, you know, bubbles the water up, and you can put your item in the water from um, the fountain um, to do a, a water charging. You can use water from your kitchen sink. That's perfectly okay. Um, you can, like I said, you can use a stream or a pond or whatever in your backyard. Um, you can use charged water. And for fire, of course, that's pretty self-evident. You can use a candle. You can use, um, for fire, you can actually also use a type of crystal that's associated with fire energy. Right off the top of my head, I can't think of any. Some, some of y'all probably know. Um, but that's kind of easy to look up. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, spirit song. <laughs> um... But, uh, yeah, anything, candles, braziers, um, the sun uh, can charge with fire energy. You leave an item, just like you would do out in the sunlight, in the moonlight, to charge with the moon's energy, you can leave an item out in the sun to charge it with fire energy. Um, so the elements really, you can use something that corresponds with that element, but it's really about your thoughts while you're doing it. Now, you can do an elaborate ritual when you're putting this stuff in the elements to charge it. You can simply say a, sm a simple statement like, um, I give this item to the earth to charge with the energy for 
stability and prosperity and growth. Or, you know, I give this item to the heir to charge with the energy of happiness, uh, emotion, whatever. Um, yeah, no, I hate that Ralph can't watch the, the broadcasts. Um, okay, so yeah, it can be something as simple as, as a simple statement. It can be um, an elaborate ritual with all of the bells and whistles and circle and everything. Um, that will really depend on you, how you feel it needs to be done, and on um, and on you know the item itself and what you're going to use it for, how often you're going to use it, um, the strength of the rituals. If you're going to use it for a specific person for a specific reason, depending on what you feel that person needs, just follow your instincts on how much and what you need to do when you're doing all of this. Okay, um, charging with the moon's light. Um, a lot of times you'll have items that you might not want to just leave outside unattended. Um, maybe the wind might blow it away, or if they, you know, an outdoor animal might run off with it, or something like that. Um, this is a good thing to have for times like that. Um, I got this box at uh, Joanne's Crafts. I am going to wood burn designs around the edges and uh, seal it with polyurethane. And then I can put my items inside here with, you know, like an air crystal or a fire crystal or a little bit of salt or dirt or something like that um, and close it up and then leave it outside under the light of the moon or the sun or however for however long I think and I know that the wind's not going to blow it across the yard um, an animal's not going to come knock it off or pick it up or um, whatever so, yeah, that's what that whole thing's for. Um, for consecrating an item, um, it's that's where you charge an item to a specific purpose, um, like charms and amulets, um, candles for specific rituals. Um, like for a healing ritual, this is what this little cup is going to be for. When I get it finished and get my sigil or ring or whatever I'm going to put on the other side, I will consecrate this cup to healing. And the way I will do that is I'll do a ritual and, um, I would probably use the visualization because that's what I'm good at. I like the visualization, it works for me, but I'll just visualize probably just colors that make me think of health and happiness and peace, things like that, and send it into the cup. Um, however you would do it, that's the best way for you, but then this, once I do that, this candle cup will only be used for healing rituals. It won't ever be used for a prosperity ritual. It won't ever be used for, for a Sabbath or an Esbot. It won't ever be used for, you know, uh, any other kind of ritual but healing. Okay? Um, for a specific spell, a lot of times, candle spells are very common. Um, you can consecrate the candle to a specific spell. Um, there's different ways to do that. You can charge it with essential oils, where basically all you have to do is put a little bit of the oil on your finger, 
and just rub it up and down the candle while you're thinking about or chanting about what you want the candle for. Like if this was for a peace ritual, um, you would use a scent that makes you feel peaceful, makes you feel happy, and you would just rub it on the candle like this and think or chant the whole time about peace, happiness, love, serenity, things like that. Um, and then you would put it in whatever holder you're going to put it in for your ritual and then do your ritual. Um, you can also charge a candle to a specific person by taking like a sharp implement and carving the name of the person into the candle. Because a lot of a lot of candle rituals will state that you need to um, leave the candle burning until it burns away, that you don't need to put it out, that you know the spell is only completed when the candle has completely burned away. That's why I like these little candles. They burn away in about an hour with very little wax residue left over. Um, and you can use, if you want to do the ritual outside, you can, you can put them in these little ritual cups that way well, you're always sure the sand is in the bottom so the wax won't get all over the glass and you don't have to clean it. Um, and it's not, the candle's not going to fall over, the cat's not going to knock it over, or stuff like that, um, because it's inside the cup so everything's protected. If you're going to do it outside, you can use a taller, um, a taller vessel, like this tall, with a little bit of sand, enough sand to hold the candle up, put your candle down in there, and then you've got, unless it's really, really um, windy or stormy outside, then your candle's going to burn away outside without being blown out by the wind, or falling over and catching woods on fire. Um, but yeah, you can you can uh, yeah, just using the oil or you know carving the name of the person onto the candle, and then you've got your candle charged for your specific ritual. Um, for things like charms, you know, if you're going to charge jewelry. It doesn't have to be specific, you know, like this, you know, crystals and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you feel like when you go out in public that you're bombarded with things, negative energies, all that kind of stuff, and you just want to have your your aura, your shields boosted when you go outside, choose a piece of jewelry that you wear all the time, like a ring. This ring I wear a lot. I love this ring, um, so if I wanted something like that, I would consecrate this ring as a charm to strengthen my shield and my aura, so that every time I wear it, it works for me. Um, it doesn't have to be a special piece of, of jewelry, you know, that's a pinnacle or that is, you know, a Celtic knot. It doesn't have to be anything like that. It can be anything. I mean, most people wear their wedding rings all of the time. You can charge your wedding ring as a charm to help you get through your day or to remind you of something or, you know, to strengthen you because you're going to be wearing it every day. Um, just, you know, anything like that, even a piece of clothing, you know. You know, you're going to a specific event and you're wearing a new dress and you want to feel confident and strong and, and handsome or beautiful or whatever, so you take that, you know, that piece of clothing and you do a simple charging ritual on it. Um, and you consecrate it to what you want it to do for you. So when you wear it, you've got those feelings. Um, so that's what that's what I think, you know, cleansing, charging, and consecrating, and the difference between the three is. So, 
See, I didn't know anybody else did that worse than that. It was just me. <laughs> I mean, clothing is our shield against the world already. Um, it's our shield, you know, what we wear helps our, you know, our self-image, it helps our emotions, it helps everything. So getting that little boost to our clothes is actually much more personal and I think much more powerful um, than anything else. So does anybody else have any, um, you know, anything to add, any rituals that they do? It can be any closed spirit song. Um, because think about it. When you're getting ready to leave the house, you put on clothes. Um, if it's a special event or you think you might see somebody important, or you know, some people do won't leave their house without being dressed to the nines with makeup and hair completely done. They just they won't even run to the corner store without everything in place. I'm not like that. But when I'm going out, you know, like going out to sing karaoke with my friends or um, you know, anything that's out of the ordinary, I choose my clothes to reflect confidence, strength, um, attractiveness, and so why not give those clothes that I'm, I'm choosing that little bit of, bit of boost to help, to help bolster all of that. It works very well. Exactly, Wittersons. We use clothes to accentuate what we feel good about and to cover up what we don't. So does anybody want to tell us about their rituals for uh, their cleansing or, or consecrating rituals or whatever, how they do it? Yeah, a lot of people do have a uh, a certain specific outfit that they use for ritual. If they don't, if they don't go sky clad, they have like I have a dress um, that I wear um, to do rituals and stuff. When I when I go that far, most of my stuff is more mental. That I don't I don't do full rituals with a circle and altar and all that kind of stuff very often, but when I do, I do have this one specific dress that I wear when I do it. Yeah, and it can be anything, you know, the scrub pants and the t-shirt, that's perfect. It's because you want to be comfortable and you want to be confident and when you're doing ritual. If you're wearing something that's uncomfortable to you, then your focus is not going to be where it needs to be. You're going to be distracted if you're uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, if I was kind of, that would hurt if you touched that spirit song. <laughs> 
But like I say, you can do, there are some crystals that are more associated with the fire element um, that you can use instead of actual flame. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure how to say your neck. Your Nick, uh, Seba, Seba. Anyway, yeah, you can use a symbol of fire. You don't have to use actual fire. You can use something that is the color red, a piece of cloth that's red that reminds you of fire. Um, yeah, sunstone is is a uh, fire crystal. Anything that reminds you of fire or makes you think of fire when you see it, that can that can be your stand-in for that element. We had an issue at the Air Force Academy when I was working there. We had some Wiccan students, and they weren't allowed to have candles or blades of any kind, not even dull blades, in their dormitory rooms. And some of them were, you know, upset about not being able to set up a personal altar with the things that they are that they wanted. And uh, one of the commanders who was, you know, trying to address this issue knew that I was pagan and he asked me uh, what they could do about it because they couldn't allow open flames in the dorm rooms. It's a fire hazard. Um, and blades, it was just, that was a blanket rule. You don't have any kind of sharp implements or blades in the dorm rooms. Um, so I told him, you know, I have an electric candle. It looks just like, I don't know where it is right at the moment, but it looks just like a candle. You put a little switch on the base, the little light bulb comes on, and it looks like a candle. I mean, it's a, it's a light. It doesn't really look exactly like a frame, but it's it's good enough. Um, or like I said, a, a representation of, of the, uh, the flame or a flame crystal. And I told him about all that, and for the Athame, I told him that they can use wands instead for, um, for their finger. And he even brought a couple of the students to me to talk to them about using these alternative things um, that they had couldn't have in their dorm rooms. Um, so it was a you know, using a symbol, using a stand-in was a good way to, for that situation. You can use a picture, you know, a picture of a campfire or something like that. Because really, you know, these things all have an energy of their own. Fire has its own specific energy wavelength. Water, earth, you know, all of those, they have their own specific energy, but you can connect with that energy without having anything, you know, in your hand or on your altar or something that actually has that energy in it. You know, um, because the energy is always there. It's always in the atmosphere and, you know, in the world around us. The energy is always there. The things simply help us focus on that energy better. Um, yes, web chat, they can. They can get to where they no longer need tools or altars or anything. Um, and, uh, but the things that we use to represent or to um, for these elements, they're there to help us focus on the energy. So anything that reminds you of that element can help you um, focus on that energy. I'm Dark Witch, web chat.
So, any questions or, you know, anybody want to describe their own rituals that they use or anything like that? Right, Apep, it can be anything. It can be something you make yourself. It can be a picture you draw on a piece of paper. Um, it doesn't... A lot of my stuff, like this, wasn't really all that expensive. Um, I think I paid like $22 for it at a uh, Renaissance Festival. Um, this was a candle holder that I used for a prosperity ritual. I made this out of children's modeling clay. Yeah, these little candles, they're like 10 or 15 cents a piece. These candles are like 75 cents a piece. You know? Um, this box that I got for doing outdoor cleansing, I think I paid three bucks for it. You know? I don't remember exactly. I bought it the other day. It was either three or five dollars. Um, this little candle cup, I got at Goodwill. I think I paid a quarter for it. Some stuff is, yes. And, you know, if you have the money to spend, you know, get what makes you feel good. You know, if it makes you happy and to have it, go ahead and splurge if you have, if you have a little bit of extra. But don't worry about getting top of the line, made specifically for pagan ritual stuff. None of the stuff I have, you know, except the scrying mirror really was made specifically for ritual purposes. It's awesome, bring it. <laughs> I bought this one years ago at a little shop in Manatee Springs. Um, but that was when I was active duty and had a little bit more disposable income than I have now. <laughs> I get a lot of my candles from, Wal from Walmart and uh, a lot of my candle holders. It doesn't matter where you get them. Um, you you cleanse them and you charge them for yourself. And thank you, Web Chat. <laughs> I'm glad you're here too. So, any other questions or comments about anything? Well, I put, um, getting gifts of ritual items is always nice. Um, and it really, that higher 
people of a higher power. Uh, that's kind of a, something I don't really subscribe to. Somebody may be more experienced in manipulating energy or, um, or better at certain types of spells or energies. Um, but there's no one of a higher power to me. Um, and I'm not being arrogant that I'm the most powerful thing in the world. Um, because there are people who are better at ritual, better at spells, but they have, um, but they just have more experience. Better focus, maybe something like that. Um, they're not higher power or superior in any way. Just have learned more. Um, it depends on who the, per the person is, APEP. Um, like with this that I got from Murdershins. I love it. I didn't cleanse it. I didn't charge it because it's got her on it. You know? Um, and I haven't used it and I don't I don't see any need to take her out of it. If it's somebody if you get it from somebody who you don't have that close of a feeling for. Um, somebody that maybe, um, I don't know, it's just, it, you have to, to um, gauge it on your relationship with that person, who and what that person is. It's always nice to get gifts um, of ritual items. But whether you cleanse it and charge it or not, that is going to have to be on a case-by-case -case basis. This necklace right here was made specifically for me. I've never done anything to it. I've never, you know, cleansed it or charged it because the person who made it for me um, is special to me and made it specifically for me with me in mind to help me and to make me feel better. Um, so I had I had to leave that energy in there. Um, it wouldn't have been right to take it out. And I wear it during ritual, even with that other person person's energy in it, because that person had good thoughts about me when they made it. <laughs> you did a lot to it, Cancer Dragon. <laughs> True, Spirit Song. If somebody gives something to you expecting something in return, it's not a gift. A gift is given freely with no expe expectation of anything, not even gratitude. Um, if you expect something in return, then it's not a gift. And if someone gives you something acting like they expect you to do a specific thing with it or um, anything like that, then you definitely should cleanse the item before you use it. Because that residual energy of their expectations can sent me can can affect your ritual. That's true, Wordershin. You 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 never can truly know most of the time you can never truly know what's at the core of another person. Most people do, eh, Pep? OK, 
Okay, so my hour's almost up. And um, I thank you all very much for talking with me and for being here. And I hope that, you know, what I said can help you develop your, your um, cleansing and consecrating rituals um, effectively and <laughs> Thank you very much, and uh, I guess I'll sign off now. And blessed be, and y'all. Have a great evening.